Hey everyone, my name is Corey Olsvery from Nintendo Treehouse, and I'm here today to play some user-generated courses for Super Mario Maker 2. I haven't played any of these yet, so I'm super excited to jump on in. Oh, oh. Alright, so the first course we'll play is called Overgrown Grotto. Looks like this was made by a user named MikeBit, and it says piranha plants have taken over, get to the end to be able to take them out. And it's got a pretty low clear rate of 5.94 out of 387 attempts. So this one looks like it's going to be challenging, but let's give it a go. I have to reach the goal after defeating all 25 piranha plants. So not only reaching the goal. Oh, goodness. Don't come out, please. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, goodness. I actually don't know if I can get up there. Let's just continue on. All right. Restart. So there are five keys that I'll need to get. So this time, I'm going to try to get them all in one go. So that pipe down there is letting me think that I'm going to need to come back with maybe a fire flower. Oh, goodness. Amateur hour, but at least I'm not alone as these other red X's that fill the screen have uh, have perished before me. Oh, brutal. Start. This is why this has a 5.94 clear rate. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Third time's the charm? Although difficult, this is a, this is a fun one. Ah, oh, that is exactly what I needed. So in terms of uh, like pros and cons of like what I like so far about this level, I think it's uh, it's pretty fair to the player. So so far when I've been failing, um, I feel like it's been my fault. So um, so I like that. I definitely like that side. Another thing I really like about this level is just the fact that with uh, with Red Yoshi here, I'm able to fire the the three fireballs. It makes me feel so much more powerful. Whereas I was having so much more trouble on the first go around of this course. It now feels like I'm super powerful. And cannot be stopped by these pesky piranha plants. All right, I need one more. Did I actually miss one? Oh, there's one. There he is. Success. That felt good. Yeah, that was a really fun course. Um, dug the challenge at the beginning. Of course, it, it humbled me through a couple of missed time jumps the first time through. But um, but that makes it all the more satisfying when you finally get it. Looks like the uh, world record there is two minutes and seventeen seconds, which I'm in no shape to challenge that right now. I'll give it a like though. So the next level it looks like is called Explosive Temper. This course is made by a user named Van Access. His description is, you mad? You look a little hot under the collar. I feel like I'm being called out here already and this, uh, this course has a pretty low clear rate of 6%-ish out of uh, about 15,000 attempts. So. I'm feeling pretty confident in my skills though, so let's see what Explosive Temper is all about. Hopefully I don't get one after playing this course. Off the bat though, oh, okay, so we've got the Angry Sun, which, and it's an auto-scroll course, which um, <laughs> can be pretty difficult at times if you don't keep pace. Okay, which I'm clearly not doing. All right, so interesting thing though, he's using the Angry Sun, um, Looks like to keep you on your toes and the bombs, you have to kind of, you can't force yourself forward too much. All right, I feel good though. So this next part, I just need to be quick, quick about it. Oh, wow, got a little close to the sun there. All right, go, 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 go. Oh, all right. Oh, did I jump far enough? Okay, wow. I don't know if I need this or this is just what they wanted me to feel really powerful. Yeah, this is the end. Wow, I don't know how I lost track at how many times I uh, failed that course, but um, it made it all the more satisfying when, uh, when I finally cleared it. So it uh, looks like the fastest clear time is two minutes and 25 seconds, which I came nowhere close to. I definitely like that course. Yeah, let's give that course a like. All right, our next course up looks like it's called Antivirus Mario. Uh, by someone named I Hey Typos. So something is wrong with the computer, go inside and take out the bugs. 
Got the Super Mario Brothers 3 game style. Love that one already. All right, so I guess I'll go in this little house. Hit the on off switch. Oh, come on. Can I do a small jump to get in? There we go. I'm just gonna have to use my brain on this level. Not just my platforming skills. There we go. All right. Part of me just needs to get these extra coins. That's just the completionist in me. Love the creativity on this one. Definitely feels like I'm in a computer. There we go. Let me through, please. Just wanna run fast here. Oh no. Oh, okay. I thought I was going to be trapped there for a second. That's fun. It's like a little wave going on. I made it so far. I did not get a key, so I'm guessing one of these baddies has my key. Oh, goodness. Which one of you has it? I will <laughs> stomp you all out. Looks like someone made an arrow um, out of, like, tracks pointing to this block. So that's clearly important. Oh, I needed to use that block to defeat the Goombas to get the key. Awesome. Love that one. I may not have gotten that unless the track was uh, made to look like an arrow. That was a clever, clever tip. And the goal. Man, that one just put a big smile on my face. I, I love it just because it's themed really well. That one when a uh, when a course creator just takes a theme, in this case, like going into a computer and trying to get like an antivirus out and just running with it, I think it comes together really, really well. So definitely liked that level. Great job. I hate typos. So the next course up is Skip Squeak's Switching Spire, which is a mouthful in and of itself. It's kind of amazing I got that all out. All out. Uh, made by Electro X from the US. He's Use the description, use skip squeaks and on off switches to complete this tricky tower. Um, this one's got a pretty low clear rate, only uh, about 7%. So expecting a little bit of a challenge. Skip squeaks, of course, are the enemies that um, kind of jump along with Mario's jump. So you can see here they uh, jump around the same time that Mario jumps. Sometimes you may need to uh, time that just right. Do I want that? Yes, I Oh, I was holding down the dash button when I jumped, which was just auto, uh, a little, little insta-kill there. All right, we'll just go straight down and see what we got. And there is a lot. My goodness. I, I One thing I do really like is when uh, course creators use the verticality of the subworlds. Uh, it's fun when you start at the top and then you're going down. It's almost like you're seeing a sneak preview of what's to come. So. So just come on over here, boom, boom. Oh, and of course you're invisible, so. Uh, comfort in seeing how many others have perished at the hands of Boom Boom. And I can hide out in the corner and just wall jump my way to safety. Okay, yep, yep, all right. Whew. Makes a little bit of sweaty palms on that one there. Maybe I can just wall jump here. No. That was fun. I want to replay this level now just to see if I can get that 10 coin and get really all the coins in this level. But well done level. I think um, some of the things I really liked about that one, again, were uh, in the sub level, kind of giving that sneak preview of everything to come while you're going down that clear pipe. Um, kind of just that impending doom of what you're going to have to challenge. But um, I'm definitely going to give that course a, a like. That was a lot of fun. Well done, Electro X. All right, so the next course up, it looks like it's called the Mushroom Kingdom Theme Park, made by Soul Wreck. So the description is, enjoy the attractions and get the required key to unlock a special prize. I'm looking forward to seeing what this level's got in store for me. Hopefully some, some fun themed uh, activities. All right, <laughs> I enjoy the Super Mario Brothers 3 game style already and this Goomba's pitter-patter of his feet there, so. As a child, I always loved the idea of a, a Mushroom Kingdom theme park. So let's see what we've got in store. So can't get in the pipe. It's blocked by some on-off switch blocks. But fortunately, we've got a Koopa car here, which 
some coins. Oh, it's like bumper cars with angry wigglers <laughs> chasing me. Uh, oh, and a key. All right. This next one looks like a bouncy house. Of course, these little rings here Mario will bounce off of. They first appeared in uh, Super Mario Maker, the original game. All right, this is the pipe we saw at the beginning of the level. Oh, okay. So it looks like it's now nighttime in the course. And that is uh, Enjoy, spelled out of brick blocks. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Hopefully it's not Onimus that some like boss is coming. Oh, MVP, love it. Wow, oh, this is just fun, and man, can't imagine the time again this took to make, just to make all the details. Oh, and Bowser, all right. But he cannot hurt me, as it should be. Yes. And thank you, spelled out. GG, yes, wow. That was a lot of fun. So Mushroom Kingdom Theme Park, again. I think um, what I like most about this course is that it shows that um, you don't need to make a course difficult to make it fun. There weren't many parts of that course where I, as a player, felt in really any true danger. But at each step of the way, there was just surprising elements like the aquarium or even at that, the end where you got to see the castle and the boo house and Bowser at the very end. So definitely had that theme park vibe all the way through. Definitely going to give that course a like. All right, so the next course up looks like it's called Mount Kiliman Dry Bones, made by a user Donkey Mint. He says, let these old dry bones show you the fastest way up the mountain. And this looks like the toughest course uh, we played all day. It's actually coming in at a little over 1% clear rate out of about 120,000 attempts. So I may feel humbled as we jump in and play this course. Mount Kiliman dry bones. Let's see what you got. So hit the pow block. Ride, jump. Okay, seems like that may be a theme here. Just don't mess up like that. <laughs> First impression though on this course, if, if, if the entire course is like this, I'm going to enjoy it because, so in the sake of time, I'm gonna give this one one more go. We'll see if I can uh, complete this one in the sake of time. I feel like this is gonna be it. Okay, well, I'm gonna do one more because that was way too early. So really this is the last one. Just have to make it further than that. Everyone who's played a lot of games knows exactly what I'm talking about when you fail, and it's really, the, really the last one. Okay. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. All right. I will be humbled for now, but a um, little bit later today, off camera, I promise I will complete this level. All right, so our next level is called World 5-2 Plateau Platforms, made by Third Bunny. Um, he says it's Course 38 of Super Mario Maker Worlds. Uh, it's got a pretty decent clear rate of 8-17%, so uh, more on the difficult, maybe moderate side. And that course name makes me think that he's got a lot of courses that he's created, so... Um, if this one's good, we may have to check out some more courses made by Third Bunny. And right off the bat, I can say I like that he used Super Mario World, uh, the Super Nintendo game style. This uh, Super Mario World was always one of my favorite games on Super Nintendo. So far, pacing feels good, almost like it could be in a, in a Mario game. These tracks, like the use of, yeah, platforms, these moving platforms. And of course, the slopes. The slopes are so fun to go down as I get hit by the enemy, but that's fine. Let's just wait for him, just because it's satisfying. Who doesn't like defeating Koopa Troopas just by holding the down button going down a hill? And I don't know if I'm gonna need my fireballs, but it's nice to know I've got them if I need them. I like that uh, they've incorporated some verticality. Oh, why did I shoot him? I might need that. No, nope, okay. I thought I thought I might have needed to jump off him to reach that coin, but fortunately it was not that high. And of course, I am short-handed. I'm missing three coins to have a key to get in that door. So either I missed them or they're up ahead. And of course I missed them. <laughs> wah wah sound effect. <laughs> um, but I beat the course. That was actually a lot of fun. Um, it was more on the simpler side, but. I think what that course did really well was um, 
it had a lot of fundamentals down and it let you, uh, you know, mess around with the basics. You had, of course, the moving platforms on rails, um, and then the coins that were completely optional, but they um, really are there to motivate you to go replay the level. I kind of want to know what I'm missing out on now. So off camera, I may go back and replay it a little bit later. I will give that level a like. Well done, third bunny. So now that we've played a few levels, one thing we wanted to do is uh, share a level that Nintendo Treehouse made. In fact, this next course I wanted to show you, instead of playing it, wanted to give you a sneak peek behind the curtains of kind of how it was made and what changes were made to the course based on playtesting. So this next course is called Round One Invitational 2019. And this course was specifically created for use at the Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational held in Los Angeles earlier this year. Um, in this competition, um, we invited skilled Super Mario Maker players from around uh, North America to come and show their skills. They hadn't played Super Mario Maker 2 before, and this was the very first level they played in the competition. So I'm gonna grab Mario and we'll uh, actually just jump into the warp pipe. I'm in make mode right now, which is why we see all the course parts around. I can toggle back and forth between make and play, which I'll do here momentarily. Um, you can see here, this was the second part of our course. Right off the bat, players had to make a decision to go left or right. Um, a lot actually changed in this part of the level through player feedback. So you can see here, players had to make their way vertically. If you look on the left side, these are little bouncy trampolines here that are moving left and right. And as you scroll up, you've got these blocks and um, these are called blinking blocks, which uh, appear and reappear based on time. And what we found is that we originally had the blinking blocks at the very bottom, but it was providing a little bit more of a challenge than we wanted off the bat. So we decided, um, well actually because of that, players were immediately going to the right side. So we decided let's have the left side start a little bit easier with trampolines. So if I use the, uh, let's see here, editor really quickly, I can briefly show what that looks like. So you've got, of course, your um, trampoline blocks, and then these are your blinking blocks up here that are timed to, of course, you can hear that beep, 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 and then it disappears. So it, um, we wanted to just be a little bit gentler on the bottom side so players would still feel motivated to continue this path. Of course, at any time, if a player felt like, uh, this left path is a little too difficult, they could go into the right path. And this path also changed quite a bit. Uh, these exclamation blocks, actually, the way to advance is to do a ground pound on them. Um, of course, this was uh, kind of taught to the player in the previous screen, uh, you needed to ground pound, but if you don't ground pound, you can see it's a little more challenging. The blocks only come out one at a time. So after players made it through that second section, uh, this next part put Mario in the Koopa Troopa car, which is the very first time this has ever appeared in a Mario game. Um, we knew it was going to be very, uh, you know, the, the car feels pretty unique and it maybe doesn't control the way you might think it does when you first play. So here again, we kind of use that philosophy where we had a lot of spikes in here originally, uh, where these trampolines were, but instead, if those were spikes, uh, the car would actually uh, start breaking down. Um, and we didn't want players to get too hung up. You can see I, I took a hit there. And if you take too many hits, uh, the car will be destroyed. And then Mario uh, is just by himself. And um, specifically, we wanted this section to be only completable using the Koopa Troopa car. So we didn't want it to be too frustrating though for players. So again, that's why you did see some areas with a challenge like those spike blocks there and it still needed precision timing. If I go into edit mode here, you can see a little bit where we tried in m many circumstances to put these trampolines where walls are. And that was an effort to ensure that if a player hit the wall, his car wouldn't be destroyed, but instead he would just be sent in the opposite directions. Similarly, these doors were placed as an opportunity. If the car does get destroyed, then um, by going in this door, uh, a new car will be uh, will appear for Mario to just hop in, as you can see there. This one went underwent a lot of changes, but it, we felt that it, it was important because it, uh, the Koopa Troopa car is brand new, but more importantly, it's just a lot of fun in Super Mario Maker 2. And this last section of the course is pretty simple. 
Um, it just requires some very well-timed jumps. Uh, we wanted it to be a little bit reminiscent to the old uh, uh, Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational that we held a few years ago. Um, it was a crowd favorite when those really long jumps were, uh, were necessary. But if making courses is something that you're interested in, cannot really stress enough just getting someone to play test it. And, um, and who knows, you may you know, change up the level based on their feedback. So that about does it. It was a blast playing some of the levels made by players like you around the world. Of course, there's over 7 million levels already online uh, with many more coming every day. Um, it was also cool getting to show you a little bit behind the scenes of a course made by Nintendo Treehouse staff here. It was made for the Invitational. Kind of as a way to show behind the scenes and how playtesting courses and getting feedback and thinking about your audience uh, is really important as you think about making fun courses. And of course, Super Mario Maker 2 is available now for Nintendo Switch. Recently, an update was released that allows uh, being able to play with friends online, as well as a few other features, and more updates will be coming, such as additional course parts. It's been a blast. Thanks again for watching. Bye. <laughs>